Well, let's move on to Investec, which is a diversified financial group primarily active in investment banking, private banking and asset management. Right, so we know them well. Headquartered just up the road here. Stephen Kosseff has been at the helm for a long time. Mm. But Henrik de Toy took the business global with the purchase of asset management businesses in the UK. And remember, it's also institutional as well as lots of private client asset management at the core. Market of the cap, group. 93 billion rand, trades on a PE of 14.4, dividend yield here of 4%. Let's start with the share price graph. So that you can buy here in Rands. Remember, it's Investec Limited and Investec PLC, two entities, yeah. but you add them together and they share the profits. So it's basically the same entity, just two entry points. And it, the question is, obviously, off its all-time highs, but can the upward trajectory there be maintained? And is there money to be made on this investment? I think so. It's got some challenges. Obviously, the UK is very heavily... Um, tainted or, or undermined by Brexit and the big uncertainty of Brexit and, and that really unfortunately overshadows the share price at this point. And the process point. obviously of Brexit unfolding as we speak. Yes and so there's, there's really no clarity on financial institutions, banking and Brexit and their participation in the EU. So I think it has dampened the share price. It, the share price took a big knock as a result of Brexit. Investec obviously trying to look beyond Brexit and they, they, they say they're a specialist niche financial business. Um, they have done pretty well. There, there were quite a lot of legacy assets in the UK that they bought sort of in that, that heavy mortgage business which they're working their way through and positioning themselves as an asset management and a specialist bank. And they're doing actually very well in that space. They've made good progress and, and you see good progress. Um, the earnings flat unfortunately um, so that's not coming through in the earnings yet. Uh, well, it remains to be seen w whether they can really crank it up and get the earnings going again. Paul, your thoughts? We, we don't have exposure to No, investing. we have owned it at times in our portfolio because uh, it always looks inexpensive relative to its global peers. And it's underappreciated just how strong their annuity revenues are. They're very good, and I think people who bank with them will know, they're very good at wrapping up their clients mm. in a variety of lending and asset management relationships, asset swaps for international investing, uh, using funds I should disclose, I do bank with Investec at I this don't, stage. but I'm kind of aware peripherally yeah. just how strong the zebra is when it comes to people's sort of perception of their financial administration. I think there's a little bit of a risk that they may be... Uh, come after by discovery with their new banking product but we haven't seen that you know well, after some don't months underestimate hype. discovery as disruptors to any industry that they actually decide to take on but they've had a stellar tech track record in terms of aggregating assets both institutionally as well as in terms of the private client base as i've mentioned so you got and to this hand it reshuffle to them. happening at the top obviously we are seeing the next tier yeah. management coming yes. through to to lead the group yes mm -hmm. and they, they, they've built a, a very strong sustainable business and it's the, the original founders really have taken the business far as you say paul still a ta track record and looking to to the future um i think this business you've got to give it the benefit of the doubt. I, I don't think they're as exposed to Brexit as some of the really big international banks that are based in London. So I don't think it's that much of a concern. Um, and that, that specialist private banking, they're really strong in, the, in that sector. And I think that's going to become more trend. Well, let's address that Brexit thing momentarily because it's a risk for London if lots of international bankers and people like JP Morgan and so on decide to move their operations to Paris or Frankfurt. But Investec will stay there. And I think the UK economy, after it goes through a bit of a swoon, would probably re-establish itself. Yeah. But it is a bit of a concern because if you have bankers departing from London, you might find that there are fewer clients for Investec to I then... I think already Credit Suisse is in the fray in terms mm. of moving potentially Dublin uh, from a head office perspective. Could happen too because people want to be in the Euro area and they're not yeah. so keen on getting stuck in the UK if it's going to become less significant a player and if there are going to be all sorts of trade barriers and currency related barriers that get thrown up. So I think it is a bit of a concern but maybe one which is overcome fairly quickly. Hot or not, after Paul has mm. painted the landscape <laughs> from a, a Brexit a perspective. Wishy -washy. Hot on this one. You're hot. Yeah, hot. Paul? You know, I'm looking at that share price and how it's rebounded back to the 100 Rand or close to level. So I'm going to go not hot just on account of the fact that we may see that Article 50 triggering now in the next few months. So I would stay away until we see just how that shapes.